As mentioned earlier, the major goal in this unit is to be able to recognize trends in graphs, quadratic graphs in particular. Let's start by relating our knowledge from previous courses. If you were provided this equation, 2x minus 1y equals negative 1, and asked what it might look like as a graph, well, we recognize it as linear, but looking at the equation in its general form doesn't provide any easy clues for visualizing the graph. But we recall that if we first switch the equation from general form to slope intercept form, or y equals mx plus b form, well, a little algebra, we get y equals 2x plus 1, and in this form, we can easily see that the y-intercept is 1 and the slope is 2. Now, it's easy to visualize as a line passing through the y-axis at y equals 1 and rising with a slope of 2 over 1, that is the rise over run, so 1 over and 2 up. Perfect. So definitely changing the equation's form was a great strategy for accessing the graphical clues. So, can we do the same thing with a quadratic relationship? Indeed we can. And it's important in the exact same way, that is, being able to quickly visualize and graph the relationship. For example, here's a quadratic provided to us in the quadratic general form. y equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now it's true, the quadratic general form is a little different than the linear general form. We have the y out front, then the x squared term and an x term, and a constant at the end. Yeah, it's nice and tidy, but it doesn't provide us enough easy clues for graphing. So let's change it to the vertex form, or sometimes called the standard form, which is our format for quadratics that allows some nice visualization clues, much like the slope-intercept form for linear relationships. So with some rearranging, and we'll look closer at the algebra later, we can show this same relationship as y equals 2, and then in brackets, x minus 1, all squared, plus 1. Now, it may look a bit strange the first time you see it, but it's very useful for clues about the graph. The number at the end here, the 1, tells us, much like the y-intercept in y equals mx plus b, that we shift the standard quadratic equation 1 upwards. The negative 1 in here tells us about a shift that happens horizontally. In this case, we move 1 to the right. And the 2 out front here, kind of like the slope in a linear equation, tells us how steeply our graph rises from the minimum. And this is just enough information for us to visualize or graph our quadratic relationship. So just like your previous study of linear relationships where you spent a lot of your time on the y equals mx plus b form, this study of quadratic relationships will have you focusing on the vertex form. Both of these enable us to easily visualize the graph associated with the given relationship. Now it's true that we quickly glanced over most of the details about the vertex form so far. We will revisit these and dig further into the details throughout this unit. This tutorial is mostly just a preview of where we're heading and why. 